Hey guys, this is my May favorites video. I have several products and then I also have kind of a miscellaneous slash jewelry favorite at the end. And I do have one regret. So if you want to see what everything is, then just keep watching. Okay, so first things first, I just did a getting ready with me video before this video. So if you're curious as to the makeup that I'm wearing, I'll always have it linked in the description box. But if you want to see me actually applying it and using... Jake's going crazy outside at something. Uh, but if you want to actually see any of these favorites, live, like me using them, I'll have a link to that video below. I think I'm going to put this video up before that one, so that's that. Um, the first thing is the Sonia Kashuk Ion Neutral Palette. You guys know this is probably one of my very favorite palettes that I own. It's a palette of 12, I had to count them, 12 matte shadows, all ranging from like beiges and bone colors to like warm and cool grays, there's, um, I'm sorry, browns, and then there's a gray and a black. I kind of stay in the middle here. Those are my kind of my go-to sh shades. Um, I feel like I can't talk today. And the shadows that I have on my lids today, I use this palette. So I just love it. I think they've since changed the packaging a little bit, but it's about $19.99 and such a bargain in my opinion. The quality is amazing and the colors are gorgeous. Um, another favorite has been this eye pencil from MAC, which is funny because I'm usually someone that never wears eye pencils. I have a ton of them, but I never use them. In the beginning when I first started wearing makeup, I think I wore them a lot more back then, but um, I don't know why. For some reason, I kind of just reached for this one day, and I've been hooked ever since. I haven't used any gel or liquid liner this whole month, and this is the shade um, Engraved, which is just the black, and I just use it on my top, and I usually just kind of kind of like dot it into my lash line and then I take like a pencil brush or a smudger brush, brush even a q-tip and I just smudge it and I just like the effect of it. What I like about this the most is that it doesn't, I don't have to worry about it transferring or smudging. It really just sets and it doesn't get, it's not, it's not like a pencil where you have to tug, like it is creamy but it's not overly creamy where you have to worry about it getting everywhere such as like the Stila Eye Cajal, like that's a really dark black but you have to worry about it like transferring because it's so creamy and I feel like this is just a very good medium. I have two brushes. The first one is by Samantha Chapman. It's the Real Techniques Blush Brush. This was one of the brushes that I had put away when I did my whole brush challenge video of just really like narrowing, narrowing down my brush collection and just really focusing on those that I just needed to have and not worrying about having an abundance of brushes. If you're not familiar with that video, I'll have it linked in the description box. But this was one of the brushes I kind of got rid of at the moment and I thought I didn't really need. And one of the very few brushes that I pulled back out I missed using. And I've been using it ever since. I love it for blush. It's just very fluffy. It's very soft. It is a synthetic brush. And this is definitely a brush that I think I'll always have in my collection. Another brush, I think I've talked about this in more in a more recent favorites video. It's by Sigma. It's the Precision Angled P84. It's an angled brush. It is, again, a synthetic brush. And I've been loving this for applying my under eye concealer. I know a lot of people always go with the ring fingers to apply under eye concealer, and I do at times, but I feel like when I watch people do it, it just looks so much easier and it blends so much easier when I see them do it than when I do it myself. I can never get it to just absorb into my skin. I feel like I always have have to like really work it and it just gets all over and I'm just not a fan of using my fingers for under eye concealer. So that's where this brush comes in. I just think it helps to really um, marry the product to my skin. It really helps the product absorb, in, absorb into my skin well. Another favorite is a skin favorite. This is the Kate Somerville Exfoliate. Probably hands down one of the better face exfoliators that I've tried. I really do like the Origins, um, I'm drawing a blank on it. It's a microderm, I don't even know. I will put a link to it, whatever I'm talking about. But I wanted to get them both and kind of compare. I got this like in a value set. I love the smell of it. It smells like big red gum, like it's a very spicy cinnamon scent. But I really love this because you apply it to damp skin and you kind of just leave it on your skin for a few minutes to just work its magic and settle in. And it does have a little bit of a tingling sensation, but nothing overpowering or hurtful. It doesn't feel like pain on your skin. The microbeads are so, so fine. And I really feel like it just helps to slough off all the dead skin cells. And then once you rinse your face, I feel like you just get this radiant glowing complexion underneath. And I just have really been enjoying using this. Um, it is more of an abrasive exfoliator, so if you do have sensitive skin, I would probably maybe try a sample of this before you splurge because it is a little bit expensive because I feel like if you do have sensitive skin, um, this might not be the product for you. But again, you do have control over how you're exfoliating it and how much pressure you put, you're putting on when you're using this. 
sticking with skincare, I've really been enjoying, again, this Origins Ginseng eye cream for a while. I wasn't even using an eye cream. I just didn't miss one, didn't miss using one. I didn't feel like I needed one. Up until recently, I feel like my under eyes are just extremely dehydrated and just parched all the time. So I've kind of been using this again and refallen back in love with it and now I feel like I can't go a day without using it. I actually had it in this room to put aside to do as a favorites video over the weekend and when I got up this morning, got out of the shower, I went to use this, I freaked out because I it wasn't under my sink and I couldn't I didn't remember what I did with it till I remembered it was in here. Um, I definitely miss when I'm not using this so I, I really like it. It's a very refreshing um, feeling and it has that little tiny bit of a pink undertone to really help brighten your eyes. So that is it for my favorites. One fail. This is the shower jelly from Lush. This is in Sweetie Pie. It's just the scent of it. Um, but just in general, I cannot stand using this product. And I'm not someone that ever likes throwing away product or wasting a product I've spent money on. So I'm determined to get through this. I don't have that much left. I always loved the concept of this and I know people love this product from Lush, but to me, it is just such a tedious, annoying process with using this. It's a jelly, so it doesn't stay in my hand. It doesn't stay on my loofah. It's constantly like slipping, literally slipping out between my fingers, slipping out of my sponge. I try to crush it. I tried, I tried using it like on my legs as a shaving agent. I just can't get it to work. It ends up being in like crumbly pieces all over my shower, shower floor, and it's just annoying, and I can't wait to be done with this. Um, I've tried it so many different ways, like in sponges, in loofahs, with my bare hands. It's just not a fan of it. Finally, a jewelry favorite. I'm so excited to share this with you. These are the Stella and Dot displays. And um, before recently, these were only available to stylists that were Stella and Dot. They're, we use these to display our um, jewelry for in-home trunk shows. And we've been asking for so long to make them available to customers because they are such gorgeous display pieces, not just for a trunk show, but for your home or your room. And they finally listened to us and they've made these available for purchase for customers. So I wanted to just make you aware of that because if you guys are anything like me, you enjoy displaying your jewelry and having it on display, not only to use as a piece of home decor, but for me, it makes, it forces me to remember and see the pieces that I have and it forces me to wear my jewelry, whereas most of my jewelry right now is housed in my large jewelry armoire, which I have a whole video on. Again, I'll link it. But there are definitely pieces um, that I forget that I have. So I use this kind of display frame to put those out and just rem remind myself that I have those pieces. I tend to put my delicates on this. I tend to just keep my delicates on here because it separates everything and keeps everything less tangled and I think the delicates just look really pretty but you get six hooks and on those hooks you can put anything from bracelets to um, you know chunkier necklaces I have like this Sutton necklace here you can fit more than one necklace on a peg and the other nice thing is it's kind of a cushioned pad so you can actually just stick your studs right in here and I'm not able to do this one-handedly but I'm trying here. You can use this for your earrings as well to display, which is kind of how I use these for trunk shows, but um, you can also use these to just put your earrings in as well. It's kind of just like a little pin cushion, so whatever has like a post or, um, you know, a spike, you can use the, the cushioned board to just display your jewelry, and I think it looks really gorgeous on a dresser. I actually have um, quite a few of my displays on this thing behind me, which is always sideways. It's against my wall, so you can never see it in my videos, but that's kind of how I have a lot of my jewelry displayed. They also made the bracelet bar available for purchase. This is one of my favorite display pieces, not just for the in-home trunk shows, but again, I have it um, in one of my little cubes behind me, and it's just a great way to literally display all your bracelets. I kind of have them in no particular order here. I just um, kind of have them all on here, but I also like this that for in-home trunk shows, I use it to just kind of like bunch bracelets together and give customers ideas of different arm parties and different combinations of bracelets. And I do that for myself too. Sometimes if I'm feeling really uninspired or I feel like I'm wearing the same bracelets over and over again, I'll create like little arm parties and use the bracelet bar as my guide. And then I kind of just pick pick a party um, depending on what I'm wearing for that day. So I'm really excited and I wanted to share that with you guys if you are looking for a new way to display your jewelry or if you are like me and you 
neglect a lot of your jewelry because it's hidden behind doors. Now you can kind of have it out on display. It looks really gorgeous. It's neutral, neutral color, so it kind of goes with any home decor. And I was super excited to just let you guys know that. So that is it for my favorites. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you soon. Bye!